This from the New York Times. Uh, I find you in criminal contempt for the tenth time, said Justice Juan Mershon, who said he is concerned that Donald Trump has not taken the heat of his prior findings. Going forward, this court will have to consider a jail sentence. The last thing I want to do is put you in jail. That's the news out of the courthouse this morning. Joining us now is a NBC News correspondent Yasmin Vesugian, live from outside the courthouse in lower Manhattan. Yasmin, that's a tough warning moments ago from the judge. Uh, what exactly did he it say? Yeah. And what else is happening in court today? Yeah, it, it was a big moment, I think, Mika. We were awaiting a decision um, on um, the possible contempt charges for the former president, violations of um, the gag order, four of them separately that were issued last week. And we were awaiting a decision from Judge Juan Mershon, and he kind of took us through some uh, major moments early this morning as court got up and going and, and kind of talking about the gravity of a situation about putting a former president of the United States, and he said even possible future president of the United States in jail for contempt of court, um, and the fact that it would also involve Secret Service if he were to be put in jail, if he were to violate um, this gag order. He understands and sees that the $1,000 fines is not really making any difference, um, and knows, though, that he has a job to do in spite of how difficult the decision may be, he said. Although he is not putting him in jail for now, it seems to be yet another threat for the former president to not continue to violate this gag order. We're awaiting that official decision, Mika, because it was handed over to both the prosecution and the defense. They did not read that from the bench. When we get it, I'm going to bring it to you. But nonetheless, it seems like the judge mm -hmm. is uh, ready, willing, and prepared to put the former president in jail if he continues to violate the gag order. But again, understanding the gravity of that situation and really what it would go into uh, and making that decision happen, right, with Secret Service and everything like that. Um, let me talk about the, the, the uh, witness that's now taking the stand, uh, Mika, and it is Jeff McConney, a longtime mm -hmm. controller. I'm going to look down at my phone as I'm reading this to you because we're just getting this information yeah. mm -hmm. in uh, the Trump organization, working directly with former Trump CFO Alan Weisselberg. McConney tr testified in both the Trump civil fraud trial um, along with the Trump payroll corporation trial um, as well. Um, let me walk you through some of what we're learning about about McConney and what he said. He forwarded an invoice um, on February 14th of 2017, Mika, and likely testified to this invoice saying, post to legal expenses, this is in quotes, put retainer for the months of January and February of 2017 in the description. So you think about, and we talk about what this week is really going to be about, right? And it is um, all about fraudulently um, the, the fraudulent records, right? That is what this really comes down to. The last week of testimony, the last two weeks of testimony, I should say, was really about setting up the timeline, creating this sense of a former president of the United, of a president of the United States running for election, right? And in the lead up to November and how he was desperate to win that election. And it was the timeline, some of the testimony that we heard from Hope Hicks. We are now moving to the point in which they want to talk about the falsifying of the business records and how it all went down. And it seems like this individual, uh, this next witness that is taking the stand, the jury is coming in right now, is going to speak to exactly that, right? The understanding as to whether or not the former president knew what he was doing when he put in his business records that this was for legal expenses as he reimbursed Michael Cohen. And so we're going to wait and see and hear the testimony um, from this individual now. And then, of course, Mika, we got to look ahead to some of those star witnesses, right? Stormy Daniels, also known as Stephanie Clifford. She could be taking the stand later on this week, whether or not the former president decides to testify himself on behalf of the defense. And then that star witness who I got to say seems like he's already on trial. We've heard about him thousands and thousands of times at this point, Michael Cohen. But it seems as if Mika and Joe, what I'm getting, the idea that I'm getting from all of this testimony over the last couple of weeks is the real star witness is the documents, right? Because the prosecution yeah. doesn't want to necessarily rely on testimony from Michael Cohen and or Stephanie Clifford, mm -hmm. um, Stormy Daniels, because of their credibility issues that the defense has really honed in on. They want to rely on the documents. So despite the fact that some of these witnesses that we're going to be hearing from seem a little bit more boring, right? They're not household names at this point. They are going to be integral, Mika and Joe, to building yeah. this timeline, building this story for the prosecution before handing it over to the defense. 
All right. NBC's Yasmin Vesugian, thank you very much. Uh, stay close. We'll check back in with you as developments continue to come to us from inside the courtroom. Thank you yeah. so much. So let's bring in right now uh, MSNBC legal analyst, Stanny Savala. Stanny, um, the. Uh, wow. As, as we would say, Jeez. as you would say in the, the courtroom, uh, I mean, the, the, the judge is laying the predicate. Isn't he? he? I mean, he, he's saying, I, I, we've been through this 10 times. I've been telling you all along, I don't want to put you in jail. Like, don't test it. Don't test it again in this order. Uh, you know, uh, it, this is not working. I, I don't want to put you in jail as a former president, a possible future president, but I may do that. I know you've got a job to do, but the judge says, I've got a job to do as well. Mm. It, it seems like it's a long windup, but it looks like he may be willing to throw that pitch at some point. Zero surprises from Justice Mershon here because uh, I didn't expect that he would jail Trump on this hearing, on this decision. I think mm -hmm. he's going to give him at least a couple more chances because uh, contempt violations are about a continuum. You start with admonitions, then you say, well, here's your uh, statutory maximum $1,000 fine in New York. And I don't think he would have gone to jail right away. I think from there, He's giving him another chance or two. But one thing really interesting to me is that he verbalized what I think everyone knew this judge and every judge with a Trump case is thinking, which is, I do not want to try and put an ex-president in jail, not for an hour, not overnight, not for a week. It will be a logistical administrative nightmare uh, to say nothing of the fact that he has to be flanked by Secret S Service agents. Uh, the issues involved make it so I don't think any judge wants to do that. And Justice Mershon just confirmed that this morning. But Danny, does it not uh, say something, though, by the judge bringing that up? I don't want to do this because of the logistical problems, uh, uh, even referring to the Secret Service. But saying, but I will do it if you keep uh, doing and saying and, and violating the way you are. I think him bringing up the difficulties only made it more poignant that he's saying, but I will do that if you keep this up. Oh, absolutely. The judge is saying that this is absolutely on the table and that jail could happen. And in fact, I think that might justify him doing it sooner rather than later. I mean, maybe one more chance. It really depends on the nature of Trump's continued violations. And of course, every violation after this moment, arguably since the first decision, was a, would be a violation when Trump was on notice. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, you could argue, hey, well, Trump wasn't really sure how the judge would interpret the gap order. Uh, but at this point, it's pretty clear to Trump what is and what is not going to get the judge uh, willing to find contempt. Because the judge has denied, at least in some instances, the prosecution's allegations of contempt, but largely found that Trump's tweets, when challenged, did fall within the gag order and that Trump violated them. So uh, this is fair yeah. warning to Donald Trump. Even though gag orders are constitutionally suspect, Donald Trump knows in this court with this gag order what is to be expected going forward. MSNBC legal analyst Danny Savalos, thank you very much. And we will be right back with much more Morning Joe.